Hi, this is Kelly Hilbert from Apaca Direct, and I was here, I wanted to show you this handy dandy little trick that I am using to graft one by one ribbing. And if you look at it here, it's been grafted and it's uh, smooth, it's not too thick, and it can be used at the back of a collar, for instance, or you could use it for something like this, where I've done this, I've done this three needle bind off on this scarf here, and the three needle bind off it's not exactly in pattern and it has this ridge that goes all the way across it. Where if you look at this fabric, it has grafting all the way through the whole thing. So it looks really nice on both sides. So I was thinking it was worth it to show you how to do this. Now when you're doing this, you'll need at least four double points and I don't need the crochet hook but you do need a tapestry needle and then I always use a little sticky note because what you're doing here is you're going to be separating the knits and pearls and then you're going to be doing Kitchener and stockinette stitch on one side and then flipping it over and doing Kitchener stitch on the other side and stockinette. So I will move this out of the way for a second and we will grab some double points and see what we can do here. So what I'm doing, I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my work and I'm going to start separating knits and pearls. So I'm putting the pearls on the back needle and the knits on the front needle. And then when you're done doing this, you need to make sure that you have, before you start your Kitchener stitch, of course, you need to make sure you have the same number of stitches on each needle that you're going to be Kitchenering together. So that was one that was separated with knit stitches. Now, so on the second needle, I'm going to be, if you look at the fabric here, I want my knit stitches to land up on top so that I can do my Kitchener across here. So how I'm gonna do that is I will put my, my pearl stitches, yes, the pearl stitches in the back and the knit stitches in the front. Now, if you look on this back needle, there's five stitches, and that back needle has five stitches, and then the top needle here has six and six. And so if you look at them, they match exactly perfectly, and that's what you're looking for before you start your work. Now I'm gonna take my tapestry needle and just turn this so I can do it from this side where my tails are. Let's see if I can find a tail here. There you go. So I have my tail at least three times the width of my work, that my project that I'm working on. And I'm gonna grab my little Kitchener stitch cheat sheet that I like to use, which is my sticky note. And then I'm gonna do a setup row of going as if to purl on the first needle and on the back needle as if to knit and don't remove anything from the needles. Then I'm gonna begin the Kitchener by going knit as if to knit off, purl, and then on the back needle, purl, off, knit. And the front needle, knit, off, purl. And the back needle, purl, off, knit. I'm caught, one second here. There you go. And then I go knit, off, purl, and purl, off, knit, knit, off, purl, oops. gone across my row going knit off purl, purl off knit, and this is the Kitchener stitch in stockinette stitch. And then what I do is I take my work and I flip it over very carefully, and I grab 
move that one tail out of the way and I want to grab my working yarn again that I was already working with and then I'm going to do my setup which is going as if to purl on the front needle and as if to knit on the back needle without taking anything off okay and then I continue in my stockinette repeat which is knit off purl Purl off knit. And you've got to be careful not to. And then knit off purl. See what we got here. I know it looks funny, but what you got to do is loosen it up and get that gauge back to. And you got to work with it a little bit, but what it does is it loosens it right up. And you can even take your darning needle and loosen it up more. But as you can see, here it is. The stitches evenly line up, and you have no thickness in your work. Now it's a little funny on the edges. That's why I kind of like to use my tail from both sides and kind of tighten up the edges and make them look a little better. Um, but you can see after this block is blocked, you have a great join for one by one ribbing using Kitchener stitch on both sides and then separating the knits and purls before you do that. So this is what it looks like when it's done. So it has knits and purls, and they're right. the knits are right in a row, and it looks pretty darn good. And then if you flip it over again, you have knits in a row. The only thing you have to be careful of is your tension when you're doing it, because it gets a little tight in the center, but there's basically no bulk at all. And of all the research that I've done, being able to join a project in one-by-one one ribbing never looks that great, but this is so much better than what I found in the past. So I wanted to share that with you. So I hope it helps.